Hello everyone and welcome back to Beatley Tones Beatles channel. Lovely to have you here. Thanks for joining me for this video and I hope you're all doing well. Now before we get started on today's video, I just wanted to say a big warm welcome to the channel to all the new subscribers who have subscribed recently. There's been quite a few of you. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. Really appreciate you being here and I hope you're enjoying the content on the channel. Uh, if you want to get involved in the channel, you can do that by commenting on uh, down in the comments on any of the videos, or if you just want to lurk in the background and just watch what's going on on the channel, that's fine as well. But whichever way you choose, um, thank you so much for subscribing. Great to have you here. Okay, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about what I'm calling uh, the Forgotten Beatles box sets. Uh, so forgotten are these box sets that I'd almost forgotten them, forgotten about them myself until I was reminded uh, by my friend Matthew Street uh, from the Matthew Street channel who picked up one of these box sets um, very recently and showed it on his channel and uh, that reminded me of these, uh, uh, these box sets. So thanks for that, Matt. Okay, so the history of these box sets. So back in 1987, the Beatles were issued on CD for the first time. And um, to celebrate that, um, each album got an exclusive to HMV uh, record store. Now, if you don't know HMV, uh, HMV is a UK record store. Back in the 80s, their store in Oxford Street was deemed to be the biggest record shop in the world. Uh, of course, now they are no longer in Oxford Street. They're just sort of in the suburbs now. But um, the, the, the 1987 Beatles on compact disc uh, campaign went on throughout 1987 and Albums were released in batches throughout that year and it kind of went over into 1988 as well with the Past Masters Volume 1s and 2s. Now, as I say, with each of these uh, releases, there was an, uh, uh, an HMV box set. I've got five of them. It's not a complete collection. Um, I didn't pick them all up at the time uh, for various reasons. One being uh, in 1986, my son was born and money was very tight. A um, bit later on in the campaign, I did start picking them up um, as we went through. Um, but the, the, the boxes that I've got here um, are all bought at the time. They're not something that I've sought out on eBay, although there are quite a few of these on on eBay if, if you are uh, thinking about looking for them. Now, we've got to remember that in 1987, uh, box sets weren't box sets as we know them today. These box sets are not laden full of goodies, but because, you know, this HMV uh, box set series uh, were exclusive to the UK, I was kind of thinking that maybe um, quite a lot of my overseas viewers to the channel may not have seen these before. So I will show you the contents of all the ones that I've got um, and I'll talk about the rest of the campaign as well. So let's get on with it. So back in 1986, I was still resisting the delicious temptation of the compact disc. I was happy with vinyl. It's how I'd always bought uh, albums and singles in the past, right since I started collecting records. I'd built up a healthy collection of albums and singles, and I saw no reason to change really or to start buying up albums that I already owned on compact disc. Um, and even if I wanted to, um, I as I say, I just couldn't afford to do that. Uh, as I say, we had a new baby and uh, I couldn't afford uh, either to buy compact discs or to buy a compact disc player. Um, but when they announced in sort of late 86 um, that the Beatles were going to be releasing their back catalogue on CD, uh, that was kind of my trigger uh, to make the transformation. Uh, and it took me quite a long time to, uh, to save up for a CD player. I think I eventually got my first CD player, um, which was a sort of a midi size Denon uh, CD player, uh, around sort of late summer 1987. So I'd kind of missed, you know, the initial batches of these um, these releases, and that's why I don't have the uh, the HMV box sets for, for those. Um, 
But when they did come out, they came out in batches. The first one uh, was the Black Box, uh, came out in February 1987, and it contained the first four Beatles albums, Please Please Me, with the Beatles, Hard Day's Night, and Beatles for Sale, all released in mono. Uh, came in this nice box. As you can see from the lid, uh, it cost uh, £47.95, which was uh, quite a lot of money um, back then. And... Um, one thing about these box sets, uh, there's nothing different about the music contained in them. They contain exactly the same CDs as you would buy if you just bought each of these CDs uh, singularly, which is what I actually did um, in in the end. Um, but it also uh, contained, um, bizarrely, um, uh, Bill Harry's book, uh, Bill Harry's book of lists that was included in the box set, as was... Uh, uh, a Beatles uh, on on compact disc fact sheet, which kind of told you the chart positions of all the uh, the singles uh, from that that period, uh, the sort of 1962 uh, to 1964 period, and the chart positions of the albums, and it told you a little bit about the albums and the you know getting them out on CD process. Uh, the second batch came in April 1987. The red box, which contained Help, uh, Rubber Soul and Revolver. Uh, again, I didn't get this one. I missed, missed this one. Uh, also came with a Beatles fact sheet. Uh, and it also, bizarrely, came with a copy, a uh, reprinted copy of the Beatles Monthly from uh, July 1964, which <laughs> was a bizarre thing to include because obviously the albums uh, in the box set uh, hailed from 1965 and 1966 and why they chose uh, number 12 Beatles monthly number 12 from July 1964 which wasn't pertinent to those albums um, I will never know um, I do have uh, the, as you see I do have the Beatles monthly I do have a full set of the Beatles monthlies um, but that's a story for another video um, but I don't actually have the box set but my friend Matthew Street as I said at the top of the video um, he has just bought one of these uh, and he showed it on his latest video so if you want to have a look at one of these box sets uh, in the flesh so to speak uh, hop over to Matthew's channel and have a look at his video so the next one to come out was Sergeant Pepper came out on June the 1st. The anniversary of uh, the Sergeant Pepper album came out June the 1st, 1987, which enabled them to use the byline. It was 20 years ago today. Uh, this is the box set. Um, it came complete with the cardboard cutouts and no Beatles fact sheet this time. Um, it came with uh, a 12 inch uh booklet if you like which gave you some information about the album and some photographs as well and you also got a badge an hmv exclusive badge with the album or button as you guys in the us uh, call them um next up was magical mystery tour uh, which i didn't get either um that came out on this uh, sort of luminous pink uh box again with the 12 inch uh, extended sleeve notes with pictures and notes about the album and uh, a badge now the next one to come out was uh, the white album uh, which as it was my favorite album by now i had i finally had my first cd player so i went for it um this is it so uh let's have a look at it so this is the uh the hmv uh, as it says here the limited uh box set of uh, the beatles on compact disc the white album uh that's how it looks from the side uh, quite difficult to read but it just says the beatles there on the side there let's get it open and have a look at all the goodies uh the inside of the box that is my number uh 6674 i'm not sure how many of them were made but that's my number um you get a hmv exclusive uh beatles white album badge and uh you get the sort of the 12 inch booklet a sort of extended sleeve notes so i'll show you uh what's in that 
so you've got a sort of a write-up about the white album in general and some pictures there's george with uh, rita tushingham and peter york uh, of all people this is in the uh, the bombay sessions that produced uh, the inner light and the wonderwall music soundtrack um there you've got a picture of paul and ringo with maureen and jane asher arriving uh, back at heathrow after india a uh, nice picture there of John and George on the uh, the banks of the Ganges in India. And on that page, uh, you've got John and Paul announcing uh, the new company, Apple Core, in New York in 1968. Then the centre sort of pages are the, uh, the familiar photos that you're all used to seeing. Uh, we've then got uh, John Paul... And Yoko at the uh, the London Pavilion uh, for the premiere of the Yellow Submarine film. John and Paul uh, during the recording of the White Album sessions. You've got uh, a picture here of, of uh, John and Yoko's bust in 1968, which I think is an odd picture to include in this booklet uh pertinent to the time uh but not really uh the celebration of the white album on compact disc not really that relevant uh picture on the back there uh is john and yoko and julian um at the rock and roll circus with brian jones and pete townsend and uh roger daltrey and that is it so that's it. Uh, in the box sits uh, the album like that. And it's one of those big sort of clunky uh, CDs, the double CDs like that, like two jewel cases stuck together. Now, I can remember when uh, this came out, the fact that the uh, the disc was coloured white um, was, uh, was thought by me. Um, to be a little bit sexy um, because all the previous discs uh, up to that point um, had been silver, the you know the plain old silver. So it was quite nice to get uh, the white album on a sort of a, a white coloured disc. Uh, do you remember these terrible booklets that came with these uh, early CDs where you had the white album? Um, split up the big poster in the white album split up into uh, little five inch squares which uh, no one really knew what the point of that uh, was you know what were you supposed to do with these take the staples out take all the uh, the little sections of the uh, of the white album poster out and then sellotape them together and uh, put them up round at Kennan Barbie's house. Uh, I don't really know what the point of those were. That was a terrible, terrible idea. Uh, but that is the that's the white album box. So that is everything that you get in the uh, HMV white album box. Now, if you're a regular viewer of this channel, it probably won't come as much of a surprise when I tell you uh, that I didn't bother getting the HMV box set for Yellow Submarine, although looking at it now, it does look uh, quite nice. Uh, it comes with a 12-inch extended uh, sleeve notes booklet on, on yellow paper, if you don't mind uh, a badge and a cut out and keep yellow submarine that you can cut out and make yourself. Uh, next up was Abbey Road, which I did get. And uh, here it is. Uh, alternative Abbey Road uh, crossing on the cover. In fact, this box set is all about the uh, alternative shots. Uh, it looks like that from the side. Now you get quite a few uh, bibs and bobs inside here. Uh, it's funny, you never see, bibs and bobs are always together. You never just see bibs on their own, or bobs. It's always bibs and bobs. You get some nice bibs in here. Um, this poster, for a start. Again, alternative Abbey Road shot, which is very nice. Uh, you also get this poster of the, uh, the back of the cover with the Abbey Road road sign which is also very nice and uh, you get the booklet the 12 inch 
booklet with extended sleeve notes, uh, which is not very exciting. It's not as exciting as an album of the stature of Abbey Road should be. Uh, but let me show you it anyway. Uh, so you get this sort of drawing of uh, Paul's early sketch of what the sleeve should be, uh, look, should look like. Uh, some general notes about the album. This picture of Paul from the sessions. Uh, and you get uh, liner notes, you know, for each song uh, as you did on the White Album. So uh, each song has a couple of lines about it. A uh, picture there with uh, George with Joe Cocker. And that is pretty much it for the booklet that is as far as it goes um you get the uh abbey road uh exclusive hmv badge with it um my number is on the inside of the lid uh which is 4100 and uh, the uh the, the album sits in here but uh, i've just taken it out because to be honest it doesn't sit in there very well and actually the I'm showing you uh, the boxes with the albums in it just for the purposes of uh, this video. Normally, I don't keep the CDs in the boxes. They go on my shelves uh, with all the the other 1987 uh, Beatles CDs. Uh, like I said, uh, boring old silver on the, uh, on the compact disc itself. Not even the slightest sniff of a Granny Smith. Uh, on the disc uh, and that is uh, Abbey Road so I've got a feeling that um, Let It Be and Abbey Road came out at the same time maybe uh, October 1987 uh, here is Let It Be and from the side uh, let's get it open there's my number, 7852. And not very many bibs or, or bobs in this, uh, but you do get the 12-inch um, extended sleeve notes booklet. Johnny Yoko at the console. Uh, quite a lot of text about the, uh, about the film. Of course, we've seen so many pictures from the uh, the Get Back sessions that none of these are going to excite you uh, too much. As Paul with uh, little Heather McCartney. There's George with John in the background. And then you get the text, uh, the liner notes for the album. Nice, uh, moody picture of Ringo there and we move on to uh, to side two of the album a couple of rooftop shots I think this is the only one to date that has actually got colour photos in these uh, booklets and uh, that is it you get the uh, the HMV let it be badge and uh, again the uh, the cd doesn't sit uh, that well in the box uh it's the let it be and uh, yeah another silver disc for let it be okay so that is let it be now moving into 1988 uh, march 1988 uh, the Past Masters Volume 1 and Volume 2 were released. Now, I'm not sure why I don't have the box sets uh, for these because I was fully invested by now. I, I, I Honestly, I don't know. I thought I had them, um, but they weren't um, on my shelf. So if I have them, I've lost them or I don't know where they are, but that is unlikely. It was probably more like, uh, uh, you know, I couldn't get them or for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, I can't remember, but uh, the, the packages uh, are fairly vanilla. Um, it's just the 12 inch booklet. The uh, uh, volume one uh, has a white badge and volume two has a black badge. And uh, that is all that was included with those 
boxes. So moving on five years to 1993, September 1993, saw the release of the Red and Blue album on CD for the first time. And uh, HMV were at it again and they have upped their game as have uh, Apple. Uh, so that is the uh, the red album. I'll show you the blue in a minute. Uh, there's the from the side. But it was 1962 to 1966. Um, my number is printed right up here. Uh, 14666. So quite a few of these uh, printed uh, for there for that album. Uh, the customary HMV badge this time uh, bearing the HMV logo as well and uh, we get a poster and a very nice poster it's uh, this shot which um, viewers from uh, the US will recognize as being uh, the shot that was used on the on the front of the uh, US albums box set and uh, then we get a much thicker uh, sort of 12 inch booklet. Uh, I suppose it is a double album, but that didn't really stop them um, with the white album. That was quite flimsy. Uh, so we get information about uh, the red album there. Uh, quite a few shots in this, uh, in this booklet are uh, by Dizo Hoffman, one taken in Soho. And uh, another photo there. And then we get a uh, liner notes for each song that is on the album. Another Diesel Hoffman shot there. And that is the Beatles in Birmingham. Uh, on Thank Your Lucky Stars, which if you don't know, was a, uh, a UK sort of pop show in the 60s. Uh, more liner notes there, track by track. A uh, picture there from, uh, from Paris. And it finishes up with this uh, familiar shot uh, from the back of the Revolver album. And uh, some credits there, Mark Lewison um, being credited for some of the track uh, information on the album. Now, the uh, the CD does sit quite snugly in the box on this one. Um, and uh, Apple have upped their game as well, because for the first time we get uh, an Apple uh, label with the red background so kind of uh, replicating the uh, the label that was on the LPs um, if we go to the back of this jewel case which uh, has got broken spindles wasn't that annoying when CDs first come out these plastic spindles always used to break and uh, we on disc two we get the split apple so that is the uh, that's the red album so we've arrived at the very last box of the series and it is uh, the Blue Album, uh, 1967 to 70. Looks like that from the side. And we'll get it open. And uh, the number is a little bit weird because on this one, um, you can see here, it's just written in biro, which is a bit odd. 14,684 is my number. That's a bit odd that it's not even a stamp like all the others. Um, we get the 12 inch uh, booklet, comes with it. We'll just go through that. So it starts off with some sort of text, general text about 67 to 70 album. Um, we've got the that picture there from the Sergeant Pepper launch. <coughs> And then quite a few pictures from Mad Day Out. Uh, some of these will be familiar. Uh, we've also got the sort of the liner notes for uh, the songs. Some more Mad Day Out photos there. Uh, these taken in um, St Pancras Gardens in London.
Uh, this is an odd one. Uh, the Beatles on a rowing boat uh, on the River Thames at the Twickenham end of the Thames. More liner notes there. And then from the last uh, ever photo shoot uh, at John's Tittenhurst Park, the Beatles there uh, with a couple of donkeys. And another shot there from inside uh, Tittenhurst Park. The rest of the liner notes. And uh, that is the booklet. You also get the uh, customary HMV badge for the blue album. And a poster. And a very nice one it is too. Um, so this also taken from that last photo shoot at Tittenhurst Park. Um, the one that was photos that were used on the cover of the Hey Jude album, that being an alternative shot. It's a very nice poster. That uh, that's the album sitting in the box. It does fit quite nicely. And uh, if we pop it out. We can see that, um, again, broken spindles. But there you go. It is on the uh, the Apple uh, label design this time with the blue background to match the, uh, the LP version. And uh, that's the, uh, the split Apple. So that is the blue album. And that concludes the series. So that is the uh, HMV special limited edition uh, box sets for the Beatles on compact disc. Um, the forgotten box sets as I've tagged them for this video. And I think they are largely uh, forgotten these days. Um, if you live outside of the UK, you may not even have known that these um, these existed. So if you are one of those people and you've seen something uh, that you haven't seen before, I hope you've enjoyed the little run through. Um, I think that, you know, we have to remember that these came, like I said earlier, they come from an era when box sets then uh, aren't box sets as we think of them now. They, these aren't, you know, great big lavish uh, productions they're just a you know a little bit of a, a couple of bonus items uh, if you went out and bought these uh, these these box sets you know I don't think you know it would be nice to have a full collection of these but I'm not really going to go out and search after them because I don't think they kind of offer enough interest uh, for me personally to to go out and find the ones that I haven't got, but if I happen to stumble across some of them uh, that were ridic ridiculously cheap, I would certainly pick them up just for the sake of uh, trying to complete the collection. Um, but I'm not gonna pay exorbitant amounts of money uh, to get them. I did look on eBay uh, today, and um, most of these sort of range from around about 50 pounds to about 150 pounds, depending on who's selling them, what kind of condition they are, and if all the contents are uh, inside the box. I did see a yellow submarine one, uh, which was almost 300 quid, which is uh, ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Um, but that, so that is that is it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. As I say, if you've got these box sets, uh, please tell me about it down in the comments. Uh, if you're seeing them for the first time, tell me what you think of them. As you know, I love to read uh, your comments and I will read them all and I will respond to them all as well. So if you've enjoyed this video and you fancy doing me a huge favour, please spend a second by just hitting the like button. That would be absolutely marvellous. It all helps with the YouTube algorithm, helps my videos get out to more people. If you're seeing this channel for the first time you like and you like what you see and you fancy getting involved, please consider supporting the channel by subscribing. We'd love to have you on board. Okay, well, that is about it from me. I'm going to be back at the weekend. As you know, it's Record Store Day on Saturday and I'm going to be getting up at the crack of dawn and uh, going to queue up uh, to try and get a couple of albums that I'm after. I'm looking for the Red Row Speedway Half Speed Master and uh, Ringo's Stop and Smell the Roses and maybe a couple of uh, non-Beatles records as well. 
Uh, I'm not really a big fan of Record Store Day. It gives me absolutely no joy whatsoever to get up before the sun on a Saturday morning. Uh, but I'm going to give it a go this year. So wish me luck and hopefully I'll be here on Saturday morning showing you uh, what I've managed to pick up when I get home. Okay, well, thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you at the weekend, hopefully. Bye-bye.